Joining us now on Can I Media is Wishart Robson. And Wishart, you're the advisor for climate change with Nexon Canada. Actually, I do uh, climate change in the context of energy. So my title is the energy and climate advisor to the CEO at, uh, at Nexon. Okay, so tell me what that job involves. The, uh, the job has changed over the years. So I've been doing this for about six years. And at the height of the, the climate debates within Canada and the negotiations with the federal and provincial governments, it was really focused on climate and explaining where energy fit in the picture. Over the last few years, uh, that's changed a little bit more. So there's more balance between focusing on energy, energy needs, the role of consumers, the role of producers. And it's more of a, an education process because the climate debate seems to have have waned just a little bit for a period of time. It may come back. And uh, so it's really talking about the balance between energy, environment, economy, and where climate fits into all of that. Of course, sustainability is a buzzword in the industry right now. And, and we're talking about sustaining the climate for, and the climate and the, uh, I guess, the environment for the future. So that must be something that you're focusing on as well. Absolutely. Uh, you know, at the bottom of, of all that we do, whether in our personal lives or our corporate lives, if it's not sustainable, it's not going to survive. And as we move from a, a world population that's 7 billion, reportedly going to 9 billion by 2050, and the energy needs increasing significantly, the impacts from agriculture and urbanization, uh, sustainability has to be the focus for everybody that uh, cares about the future, your kids and your grandkids. What do you see as some of the issues right now facing the industry? Well, it really depends where you are. I mean, we're a, we're a global company, and many of the companies that are sponsors here are global companies, and so you deal with issues at the local, national, and international level. But uh, clearly, I, I think one of the big issues, at least in North America, is the ability to, to find a place to build anything these days. It doesn't matter whether it's a renewable energy project, whether it's a electrical generation or transmission oil and gas. Uh, it is very difficult to go through a regulatory process with the project you proposed in the site that you, you first selected. Now, do the difficulties arise because of the process or is it because more people from the outside seem to be trying to get involved and, and have their say? Because we're, we're noticing that, of course, with the Northern Gateway Pipeline. There's, it's taking a lot longer than normal. Um, is that the case? Is it the public that's getting involved or is it the, just the process itself? If I, if I knew the answer to that, you know, I might be able to help advise my company and, and our industry uh, manage those issues better. But I, I think it's probably a convergence of forces. Uh, some of it clearly is, uh, is uh, social media. Um, you know, 140 character headline that takes us three days to figure out what the right answer is and the right context. We're, we're kind of bulky and plotting and slow when we come to messaging. We think about it a lot. And so dealing in a 140 character world with the way that we have traditionally done messaging is pretty difficult. So that, that's one. I think the second one is there's clearly been some high profile incidents uh, that we've had in, in our industry and in industry in general that perhaps people have lost some confidence in the ability of industry and, and our regulators to deliver these projects on time, on budget, and to be operated safely. But at the same time, we're continuing to advance frontiers of technology in, in all of the areas we work. We're working in some difficult environments. And the challenges, as I mentioned earlier, about siting, going through that process, I think are kind of a, an evolutionary thing that we've seen in, in North America and we'll probably start to see elsewhere as well. If we can just go back to the social media side of things for a moment, because at one time it was just the news organizations that were going out doing a story, and that's how it got out to the public. Now it seems the average person can have a voice that extends perhaps farther than a news organization had before. How does that impact the way you do things? You know, I, I don't have a Twitter account, and so I, 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 have to, I have to admit that I don't really understand how it all works and people tie in. But what I have heard is that increasingly with things like Twitter, it's really important to be the first one out there with a story. But perhaps there's not as much due diligence, not a, enough investigation before that comes out. And that's what we try and do. We try and make sure that our stories are factual, that they're absolutely verifiable, and that uh, they're well structured and, and well presented. And I think there's a, a bit of a disconnect coming. I'm not sure if, if you've heard, but uh, I was at uh, World Economic Forum meetings two weeks ago, and a speaker there was saying that by the end of 2014, they expect two billion people to be on social media. I'm not sure I'm ready for that. Mm -hmm. It, it, the interesting thing is you mentioned that, you know, first out, 
get the story out, whether it's accurate or not. And news organizations have been caught with that before and have had to apologize and make amends. Social media doesn't seem to be the same sort of thing. And once that story gets out, how much time does a company spend having to address it? You know, there's a quote that I, I really can't remember, but it talks about how long it takes for a lie to come out and then how long it takes to, you know, correct it. But it's, it's really difficult. And so sometimes you really wonder whether it's worthwhile challenging those and you just let them be because getting into the debate probably is not going to help you because the issues are, are very difficult, again, to explain. But I think there's, there's also a, 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 an imbalance in terms of what's news these days. If you remember back to the incident in, in Fort McMurray where the uh, migrating ducks landed on Tailings Pond and, and a number of them uh, died as a result of that, uh, it was front page news on both our national newspapers for a week. I think on the second day of that, uh, that reporting, there was a supervisor in his truck at one of the mines that was run over by one of the large mining trucks. And it made the second page in a small box for one day, one edition of the paper. I'm not sure that that's a, a fair balance of the public interest and, and social news when you have one story dominating the other like that one, in my view, the loss of that individual, the impact on his family was probably as significant as the other story. Mm -hmm. I, we could get into it a, a debate on that, I'm sure, but uh, we could save that for another time. Sure. Um, when it comes to climate change, how do you think things are working when it, in Alberta? Are we doing a good job looking at the issue and, and trying to handle it? Well, if you look at uh, North America in general, Alberta was really the first jurisdiction to bring in an economy-wide program that addressed large facilities, large emitters of greenhouse gases. Uh, British Columbia subsequently brought in their carbon tax on combustion of, of uh, all hydrocarbons. Uh, and still the price in Alberta is higher than it is in the EU where it's about under five euros, which is seven and a half dollars. It's fifteen dollars here. It's higher than California, way higher than the system they have in the uh, New England states for the utilities. So I think they've been out in front in terms of trying to come up with a, a regulatory package that makes sense from a resource development, a sustainability, and, uh, and a response to an issue that is you know, quite topical here and elsewhere. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.